Over the last 60 days, I've been working on building a 286 system, uh, starting with uh, very little knowledge on the x86 architecture for designing a system or x86 assembly. But I've made some pretty good progress, and today I'm just going to provide an update on that progress. So about 30 days ago, I shared a video just as a summary of uh, maybe the YouTube series I've got that uh, I had posted at that time about uh, it looks like 33 videos just kind of detailing my progress through you know just understanding the different components and the design uh, just just the basics like uh, programming the flash ROMs to actually getting some code running uh, that was 30 days ago and now 60 days in maybe another real quick update in a similar fashion I've added another oh, tw upper 20 some videos that you can take a look at if you're interested. Um, but everything from getting my PS2 keyboard working to a math coprocessor, uh, power on self test routines, talking a little bit about an upcoming VGA card that I'll be building for it, um, getting me into things like debugging and a whole bunch of uh, SPI uh, functionality and different devices I've been connecting through SPI. And then most recently, I've got the system running on a breadboard at uh, 8 megahertz, so the processor running at 8 megahertz, and that's been running well. And then I've started to segue into a PCB version of the design. And I thought in this video, I would maybe share some updates on that PCB and just walk through that PCB a bit. The design I've been chasing here is Intel's basic system configuration, and this diagram comes out of the Harris data sheet for the 286 processor that I'm using. Uh, but in it, you'll see that there is the 286 processor itself right here. Uh, along with that, there is a clock generator, there is a bus controller, and then uh, with that, then there is a bunch of uh, addressing as far as latches and also for the, the data, there are transceivers. Uh, there's also an interrupt controller. All of those pieces, along with this optional 287, you know, I have in place. And maybe on the other side of all of this would come my ROM and my RAM and other uh, interfaces like my uh, PPIs, the programmable peripheral interfaces. And I'll show you that here coming up. So that was the design I wanted to work on on my breadboard. And actually before that on my breadboard, I made a version that really just used the 286 and I implemented my own uh, functionality for this clock generator and bus controller without using these specific chips here. Uh, but as I really have moved through this, this is what I started with, something really simple, uh, just a simple little adapter I built that let me take this PLCC format of a processor and snap it into my breadboard and start working with it. Really not understanding at that point you know, what the different signals in the processor were and how they worked, etc. Uh, but slowly just kind of building up and, and learning that as I went. And then you can see here a version where I started to add my ROM and my RAM. And then eventually I added a PSOC right here that helps me do address decoding instead of uh, constantly you know, changing around things as I was just slowly building out the design of the address decoding. And then I just continued with that. I added a bus board eventually uh, up here. This is just power, uh, clock, and reset signals, an Arduino for debugging. And it started to get a little bit cleaner as time went by. And then eventually I have an updated uh, power distribution clock and reset card and Arduino up here. You know, all of this is, is tied up pretty well as far as wiring, so it wasn't too bad to work with as a base. And I kind of eventually went beyond that. I added a, a debug hat to the processor so I could actually see the values of address and data uh, and LCD output. And you can see some other types of uh, chips here that I've added for input output. And then that got me to something that looked like this. And then moving on, I eventually got to something that looks like this. And this is pretty close to where that breadboard version is at this point. So it has all my SPI functionality. I had an, added an Arduino Nano that I can communicate uh, with through SPI from the 286. Uh, you know, different uh, types of output like this eight character display. Uh, there's an OLED display that is controlled through I2C from the Nano. So I can communicate from my uh, 286 down to the nano with SPI and then from the SPI um, this nano then takes that and, and basically talks to I, I2C to this OLED over here. 
but all that's been working pretty well. Most recently, I'd added a real-time clock down here. So, you know, a few different uh, SPI devices that I have uh, going on. And there's an SD card here also, SD card reader. But that got me to maybe trying to spin a PCB version of it and something like this. And I started to populate that and realized pretty quickly that this board had issues. Uh, the actual pin out of this socket uh, was not correct. So basically that, that stopped my work on this PCB and I had to revise that pretty quickly. Uh, so then I came up with an updated version and this is what that looks like. And I populated the, the core pieces of that, which I would say, you know, what you see here is really the core. I wanted to make sure that worked before I uh, put in the rest of it. And that was working uh, with some, just a couple of minor tweaks as I've gone through this. And then that gets me to current state, which looks like this. And uh, I thought I would just walk through this and maybe point out the different uh, aspects of this design. And if I zoom into this here a little bit, you can kind of see the system, uh, you know, the system's booted up and running at this point. I believe the total power consumption for this is approximately 700 milliamps at this point. Uh, I, I can double check that, but it's pretty close to that. So uh, three quarters of an amp is where I'm at for the full system. And if I look at what's in this PCB build, uh, there's the 80286. It's a CMOS version, so 80C286. I am running with an eight, uh, well, with a nine megahertz uh, processor clock here. Uh, and you'll see up on, you might not be able to read it, but up on the reset clock card up above, there is a 36 megahertz oscillator uh, right up here. And that goes through a flip-flop coming into my system, which gives me 18 megahertz for the overall system. And then the processor internally uses half of that, which would be my nine megahertz effective processor clock. So that card up top is doing what I just said. It's, it's helping provide a, a clock into my system uh, that that'll come in then to the clock generator within my system, which I'll show in a second. Uh, but it also helps provide some power distribution, which I'm not doing much here. Just a simple little connector right here that uh, allows me to take banana connectors in from my power supply. And then I just use these quick connects to connect to the power on this system. Um, that card also provides a reset so that I have a reset button when I first turn the system on it holds reset down for a moment And also when I hit reset it holds it down for a moment to give the, the processor proper time to initialize before the rest of the devices uh, become active uh, So there's a clock gen this is back to that Intel basic schematic or basic uh, system configuration. There's my clock generator There's my bus controller I then have latches for all of my addresses to get to the external bus essentially along with some control signals that I latch. And then there are transceivers for the data bus, the external data bus. Um, there's my PSOC sitting up there that again is doing all my address decoding at this point. Uh, so I know when to enable which devices based on the address that I'm trying to read or write. I'm running 256 uh, usable kilobytes of ROM. And so I have a pair of flash ROM chips there, one for the high, one for the low byte within my word that I need to be able to provide to the processor when it asks for it. I then have my RAM, which I have physically a, a megabyte of RAM, but I've only made 640K of it addressable. The, the missing 128K from this uh, total one megabyte address space, I am setting aside for my video card. And that video card I'll talk about in a different video. Uh, and then I have a programmable peripheral interface up here that uh, does a couple of things. One, it generates my post beeps. And so it generates the, the wave for that and then sends it through. I have a little amplifier circuit right here, a little LM386. So it sends it out, amplifies it, and comes out of this, this you know, basic little PC type speaker. Also, this PPI is responsible for controlling this LCD here, both writing to it and reading back the busy flag on it. So that is just a basic 1602 LCD. I have another PPI down below, and that PPI is for the keyboard. So the keyboard plugs in over here to the left. I do have some uh, chips down here and one up here that have to do with the, the keyboard circuit but basically just reading in a PS2 keyboard, PS2 signal from a keyboard that I can then process. 
Uh, I've added to the design this little add-on board because this was something I wanted to do after I'd ordered these PCBs. This allows me a couple of things. There is a resistor that allows me to configure the timing of uh, interrupts so that as I press a key, uh, I can dial it in a little bit. So I put a potentiometer here instead of a, a static resistor that I had designed into the PCB. And that is because I changed keyboards recently and I noticed I did have to adjust that resistor. And normally I used a 33K and I have to uh, slightly dial that in uh, for a little bit better signal. Also, I have a couple of ICs here that do an auto reset. The new keyboard that I'm using expects the host to send a confirmation back to it on power on an acknowledgement. And previously my, my circuit didn't support that. So as I switch keyboards, the new keyboard would not work because my host was not giving an acknowledgement. Well, this little circuit does that acknowledgement. So I can plug in a keyboard that expects an acknowledgement and it will acknowledge it on uh, power on. Uh, down to the lower left is my PIC. Uh, that is a priority interrupt controller or sometimes also called a programmable interrupt controller. And so that will handle my interrupts. And then I have a math coprocessor, an AD287 sitting down there also. Uh, I have LEDs up here that are connected to my external bus. So all my external address and data lines, I can visibly see what uh, values are on those. And then I have an Arduino debugger here. And what that debugger lets me do is read all of the values from my external bus, most of the control values as far as enabling different uh, ICs on the chip, et cetera, along with reading the internal bus. So the on the inside of these data transceivers would be my internal bus. And that's being used, for example, from my processor to the 287. That's on an internal bus. Um, but then anything like my ROM and RAM is on the external bus. So I can read both the external bus and the internal bus values uh, with the help of some shift registers down here. Uh, so this Arduino, pretty much every pin is used. I'm reading all 24 addresses, uh, 16 external data bus, 16 internal data bus, and probably another dozen control signals. Uh, but all that, then it reads it, sends it to my PC, and I've built a Windows app that lets me uh, view all the values on every clock cycle of all of those different signals, which has been uh, extremely helpful for debugging at lower speeds. So like I mentioned, those couple of uh, shift registers down there are fetching the internal bus values and sending it through serial up to the debugger. Then I put in a VIA. This is a 6522 VIA for all my SPI communication. I have this a serial peripheral interface and many different devices I want to use with SPI, but now I have native support for SPI. I could have used a PPI. I just chose to use a VIA just for the fun of it. And I've done previous work with a VIA and SPI, and, and I kind of like how the VIA works over the PPI personally, and that's just a personal preference. So I connected a, an SPI eight character seven segment display down here. I then added an SD card reader. I also can communicate uh, to my Nano up here, the Arduino Nano through SPI, and then use it as a serial logger basically to write to my PC. In addition to that serial, I guess, uh, from the Nano, it also allows me to control writing out to this OLED down here. And uh, the cameras don't pick it up very well but uh, because of the, the refresh of the screen. But as I turn on my system, uh, it goes through. I've got code to test all of the RAM, to test the VIA, to test the math coprocessor, et cetera. And then it shows me the status of whether those things pass or fail. And I just log that out on this little OLED screen, which has proven to be quite handy, especially as I experiment with different clock speeds. I can see at what point the math coprocessor or something else fails. And then I also have a real-time clock sitting up here, and I'm, I'm communicating to it directly with SPI from that VIA. Then I have a pair of ISA slots over to the right, and those are, I'll just say, a subset of the ISA spec. I'm, what I'm not supporting is the higher IRQs at this point because I don't really have a need for them, and I'm also not supporting... DMA at this point. Um, so in a future design, I'm hoping to add uh, some DMA controllers and, and learn how to how to work with uh, DMA a bit. Not something I have in here yet. I have two cards I'm hoping to add into the system. One is a video card and that will not require DMA. And I'll talk about that in different videos, but that will use dual port RAM 
and uh, no need for DMA in my design on that. And then I'm also using a sound card and the same thing, I'm using dual port RAM to communicate to that sound card along with interrupts. And I don't intend to use DMA for that sound card. Uh, so that is the system at a high level. I might have missed some things, but uh, generally those are all the, the key aspects of the system. And it is running well at this point at uh, 9 megahertz. With that, uh, the current schematic I will have posted on my website. So I just have a blog where I've kind of been updating as I go here. And then the current code I'm using, which uh, keep in mind, I'm new to x86 coding, so you'll probably find lots of room for improvement. But the code I am using will also be available if you're interested in seeing that. Uh, with that, maybe I'll switch over here to a video of the system running.